No, the Cosmo belongs in a dump bucket. I don't know why you guys put it up so high. What is it with club soda? Top shelf, baby. <laughs> Top shelf. Vodka is a tool. When it comes to cocktails, vodka is a tool. I'm gonna make a whipped cream vodka drink and I'm gonna resurrect that ingredient. Daiquiri is one of those drinks that is, excuse the language, but so bastardized. I love a good sidecar. I think it's a great drink. I never make it. I, I think it gets a lot more hype than it deserves because people like the look of the layered effect, but the drink itself is kind of underwhelming. Unless I'm making it, there's there's no way that it's gonna be that well made. Call me pretentious again, but that it's Well, you not. are. Hey, what's up? Welcome to Through the Mixing Glass. My name is Joel. Thank you so much for joining us for another one of our cocktail tier ranking episode. Today, we are taking a crack at sour cocktails, and I've got a couple special guests. I am joined by my good friends, John and Akash. Uh, let's, I'll just put it this way. If, if I hadn't met these guys about a decade ago, I probably would not be into cocktails the way that I am now. John used to host a monthly cocktail party at his place called Thursday Night Cocktails. And on the nights that we weren't hosting other people, we would get together for R&D nights, mess around with recipes, come up with our own, try whatever else we were seeing out there. So, uh, you know, uh, hugely influential friends of mine, and I'm so happy to have them on this episode. So without any further ado, let's bring in John and Akash. John, Akash, how you guys doing? Great, man. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Yeah, excellent. Definitely brings back the uh, Thursday night cocktail memories. So it's like uh, and, it's like we're doing a virtual R and D night, aren't, aren't we? Absolutely, and and I, I will correct you in that you did say that it was monthly, but I, I think at the peak of it, we were it was every week or every other week. Yeah, it was uh, it was whenever we decided. I know there were a couple of times where we, on a whim, decided let's have a cocktail party, sent out an invite that night and had 20 people show up, so. Yes. It got a little weird. <laughs> so Akash, um, you uh, have a food blog. Tell us about it. Yeah, so I have a food uh, and cocktail history blog. It's called Psycho Chef, uh, C-Y-K-O-C-H-E-F. The idea behind the blog is is really looking into the history, uh, looking into the geopolitics of the time, and, and of course, uh, incorporating that with food. So how, food connects cultures, how food traveled through the world, and then from there developing a unique recipe that transcends different cultures, different countries, different languages. Uh, and then of course, uh, doing the same with, with cocktails. I think uh, there's a myth that cocktails are a truly an American contribution, but I, I beg to differ, but we, we can we can go more into that later. <laughs> we'll save that, we'll save that for a podcast or something. <laughs> exactly, exactly. All right. Good stuff. John, uh, what do you want? You want to plug anything, John? I got nothing. Okay. <laughs> All right. Nothing well, in that on. case, why don't we start ranking some cocktails? How does everyone feel about that? Let's get to let's it. it. All right. So we are talking sour cocktails. And just to get us started, let's talk about what a sour cocktail is. It's basically, we're talking two ounces of a spirit. There's not any one definitive spirit type for them. You can make them with gin, rum, whiskey, anything really. Talking about usually about an ounce of citrus juice, uh, followed by usually three quarters to an ounce of sweetener to go with that as well. Uh, they are shaken cocktails. They can be served up. They can be served in a rocks glass. They can be served with or without ice. It's a pretty broad category. Is that kind of you know? Does that kind of track with what you guys define a sour cocktail as? Yeah, I, I mean, I, the the specs for me are uh, flexible. Um, okay, and they're very fluid. Uh, but yeah, I, that's pretty much what I would define that as. And, and uh, th that's where I start questioning is like, when you have something with lime juice versus lemon juice, how does that differ? So, uh, mm -hmm. you know, we can, we can dive into that once you have a, a lime juice based cocktail. Yeah. And we'll, we'll also, you know, the, the other thing we'll probably want to get talk about as we get to it is the difference between a sour and a daisy. Some people would say that if you have too much of a liqueur, in with it as well, then you're no longer in a sour territory. And then you hit, you know, the point where you're talking about a daisy. I think some of those rules are a little restrictive and I don't think they're evenly applied. Um, so we'll, we'll dive into that as we get going, but let's talk about our first cocktail. We've got a classic daiquiri. Uh, John, how do you feel about a daiquiri? What kind of, where would you put it on our rankings? Um, a classic daiquiri, a proper daiquiri, of mm -hmm. any kind is a quality cocktail. Um, it's not my particular go-to. It's not something that I 
really um, am drawn to, but I think that's a top tier drink. If it's, okay. You know, if top it's, shelf sip. What do you think, yeah, Akash? Yeah, if it's new. Mm -hmm. I, I agree. I think some, it's probably somewhere between top shelf and uh, on standby for me. Uh, okay. it, it's da daiquiri is one of those drinks that is, uh, excuse the language, but so bastardized um, a, a, across. Uh, I mean, you go to you go to City Lake, New Orleans, and you just go to those like dive bars where they have daiquiri in like every color possible. Like it's it's crayons, and those are not yeah. for me. Those are not wet willies, daiquiri. like so a wet willies type place. Yeah, exactly. And and I think that's to, in today's drinking culture, that's probably what's become known as uh, the true daiquiri or, or that is, that is synonymous with it. And, and then that, that's where, uh, it becomes something that's in a dump bucket for me. So, uh, if it's true specs, if it's the classic way, uh, with rum, with the lime juice, uh, it, it belongs top shelf for sure. Yeah. I I'd agree with you for me, it's a top shelf sip as well. So I'm going to drop that in there. Um, I think if you make, if you use freshly squeezed lime juice, if you use a good quality rum, I think that's a hard drink to beat. It's nothing, it's not necessarily like, it's not gonna blow someone's mind uh, necessarily, um, but it's just a good classic drink that I think um, is is honestly, it's, it's for me, it's definitely a top shelf sip. But we will move right. on to the Amaretto Sour. Now, speaking of oh, bastardized God. drinks, there's that's about as bastardized as it gets, really. <laughs> um, Anyway, I, I will let, what do you guys think? What do you think about the Amaretto Sour? Are you talking about the Amaretto okay. Sour made with a uh, bright yellow colored sour mix from a plastic container or? No, for our purposes, about... yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, for our purposes, we're talking about drinks, how we would make them. Um, gotcha. I just drank an Amaretto Sour before we started recording this. Um, and it was just Jeffrey Morgenthaler's recipe. So he, I think that was ounce and a half of amaretto, three quarters of bourbon. Um, so not cloyingly sweet as they can, you know, if you order an amaretto sour at a wedding, you're probably not going to like what you get. But if you make it yourself, it can be a good drink. That's true. Correct me if I'm wrong, but in um, like truly horrible bastardized versions, is it more amaretto than anything else? Is that almost like the prime ingredient? That's my impression. Yeah, totally. I don't think you're off on that. I think it would be like yeah. at least a full two ounces of it, if not more. Yeah, it, when when you go to a wedding, it's uh, it's almost like a two to three second pour, uh, plus the 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 sour mix, and uh, and I've occasionally seen it topped off with club soda as well. So wow. uh, okay. there's no bourbon or whiskey or any other spirit. I mean, you have to order it that way. Uh, what is it with club talking soda? To Frank, Huh? <laughs> what is it? What is it like when a drink gets really screwed up? What is it with? And they add club soda. <laughs> club soda. Uh, if you're if you're having a drink and so and they just topping it off with a splash of club soda, like and it shouldn't be there. That's probably a probably a sign that the drink's not going to be any good. Yeah. yeah. Well, the, uh, I will tell you uh, from from an industry perspective, why they do that is just they don't want to serve a glass that looks half. Uh, it's a it's a cost saving and uh, uh, the bar tab. Bar there tab, it is, uh, cost saving. <laughs> yeah. What? Are, well, that's cost saving was has been the bane of um, cocktails for a long time. But yeah, I mean, yeah, since their existence, it, but... probably. All right, rubber meets the road. <laughs> Where are you putting the amaretto sour? Assuming it's a good, you know, a good one, not wedding, not a wedding version of an amaretto sour. Where are you guys throwing that? What's the middle category again? Our categories are top shelf sip, old standby, happy hour special, rather have a beer, and dump bucket. <clears throat> I, I'd rather have a beer. Um, okay. It, it's, it's a good drink uh, if it's made right, but I mean, there's there's so many other liqueurs that, that can be made into a proper sour, and I, I would not pick Amaretto as my first go-to. Coach, yeah, you disagree I, with I, that? I, I, no, I, I agree. I agree. Um, you know, I love, I love like, um, almond, um, bitter almond. I love hazelnut. I love all those kinds of flavors, but yeah, but cocktails is the one place that it just doesn't generally work for me. So yeah, I'd, I'd rather have a beer and, and, and just to, just to the exception of course is yes, Orjat is 
does work in plenty of drinks, but <laughs> liqueur wise, I'm, I'm thinking liqueur wise. Coach, it's Coach like you me. were, it's like you knew what was coming next. Maybe you did, maybe you can see the pick, but our next drink also features Orgeat. We're talking about a Mai Tai. How do you guys feel about a classic, well, well-made well Mai Tai? And not talking about the, the ones that you would get that have like, you know, an ounce of grenadine and pineapple juice and all that other stuff in there. I'm talking about like a classic- No neon colors. Yeah, none of that. We're talking about like a classic Trader Vic Mai Tai. How do you guys feel about those? Love them. Love them. I love it. Oh, yeah. uh, same. Yeah, no, it, it, would, yeah. it would top shelf for me too. Um, yeah, one hundred percent. That's a I, that's a top three cocktail for me. Yeah, I, I guess I guess my um, my understanding of a mai tai has always been that it's a tiki, uh, even though sour sours can be considered tiki drinks. Um, but I, I would not go to a, a craft bar, craft cocktail bar, and order a mai tai. Uh, I, I have to go to a tiki bar. Like it has to come mm. with like those extra garnishes. Like uh, that, I, that would be my opening drink at a tiki bar and then try something else. But yeah, I, I, for me, it's top shelf at a tiki bar. So Akash, you're in the Southern California, LA area, which has, from what I can tell on my side of the country, a pretty good tiki scene. Have you been to any good tiki bars out that way? Uh, I've been to a few. Um, there's one in Palm Springs that I went to a few years ago, and and uh, I tried to go re more recently, and I, I didn't get a chance to. But yeah, it's uh, the the bars out here do a wonderful job. They have access to a lot of the the fresh ingredients and and make. Yeah, you're in like the citrus drugs. capital of the world over there. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. awesome. I, I just Speaking... I just sent lemons to a few people. Some, yeah, some, uh, the other day I got one right here. <laughs> This is the funkiest looking lemon I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> this but is yeah, my this head. Is the... This is a lemon. <laughs> yeah, those, Honestly, those all grow. Yeah, the lemons that you sent us yard. are going to keep me satisfied are, for like. Are they from? Weeks. They're from your yard. They're from. They're a combination from my yard and uh, my in-laws' yard, um, and and they between us we just get tons of citrus. So we hmm. make boxes and like I'll ship it off to my family and different places and and to you guys um but is yeah that illegal? It, it, are you allowed to ship produce like that no one's saying anything i'm not putting anything illegal in there yeah as long as it's not like a lithium battery i don't think they care <laughs> all right next up we have the mexican firing squad this is a classic cocktail are you guys familiar God. with it no okay all right so yeah. this is Go ahead, Akash. Talk, talk about the recipe. Sorry, go ahead. Talk about the recipe. I, I want to hear this. <laughs> yeah, so the recipe here for the Mexican Firing Squad is two ounces of tequila, three quarters lime juice, three quarters uh, grenadine, and then also a bunch of Angostura bitters dashed into it. I want to say the recipe I use normally calls for like five or six dashes of Angostura, which is a pretty hefty amount. Since you guys haven't had this, I'm going to weigh in and drop this in happy hour special because i do think it's a really good drink that deserves uh for, you know more people should give it a try i think it's really tasty and i think a lot of people would like it if it were more out there um yeah i i, I agree I, it definitely is a happy hour special and and i, I mean i've definitely had it it's great but happy hour mm -hmm. special uh and then the secret part of that is the grenadine you have to have the the proper grenadine you can't Sorry, I, I don't want to sound too pretentious because I feel yeah. like that's what I'm talking about. When it comes to every drink, it's just the grenadine has to be uh, properly made with actual pomegranate juice. Yes, or, no roses. Uh, even a little bit of cherry juice. Yeah. No no high fructose <laughs> no. corn syrup. Nope. That, that's it. I hope that anyone out there watching this video knows that that is a given. You should be making your own grenadine or buying it from a good company that makes their own uh, good grenadine. And, and grenadine is not cherry syrup. No. Okay, so next up. Add a little we, bit of cherry juice. You can, okay, next up, in. we have the Army and Navy, another classic cocktail that also probably does not get the credit that it deserves because it's pretty damn tasty. I am, in fact, drinking one now. I'm getting to the bottom of it. We're talking gin, lemon juice, orgeat, and uh, a, a one dash, just one little dash of Angostura. Uh, have you guys had Army Navies? I have not. But the thought did cross my mind to make a just throw together a gin sour of some sort. And what would you say it's oh, or jat? Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what your kind sweetener of instead of simple. What kind of gin should you use for that? I go London dry. This one's with beef eater. 
Um, okay, my favorite. I that's pretty much all I use. I don't buy like Hendrix is. I just stick with London Dry. You know, it's 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 a perfect gin. You don't need to mess with anything else, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, I got it. All right. Huge, huge tangent for me. I think uh, I'm extremely biased towards American gins now. Okay. Um, no, nothing. Nothing wrong with Beef Eater and Plymouth. They're they're classics. They're great. I have bottles of both. Um, but that being said, uh, I think for for this particular drink, uh, for this particular drink, the Army Navy with the Orjot, I would probably prefer it with a American gin, and mm-hmm. that would be a really good happy hour special for me. Okay, I, I could I could see that. So, Coach, Central, you're good with you, you're good with happy hour special. Um. Yeah, happy hour special. <laughs> oh, I got okay. Bet. All right. Uh, and where are you putting I, it? Like Where's I said, you? if if this were purely my list, I would probably bump it up. Uh, but as this goes, you are the guest, so I let you guys determine the final rankings. If there are strong opinions, if there aren't strong opinions, I would bump it up. But I'll leave it in happy hour special, as you guys are my guests. <laughs> Uh, okay, next up, we've got the Trinidad Sour. Uh, ha- are you guys familiar with the Trinidad Sour? Damn. All right. Yeah. It is a hefty pour of Angostura bitters, like an ounce and a half of Angostura bitters. So no dashing. We're talking a full ounce and a half of bitters with half an ounce of rye whiskey, three quarters of an ounce of lemon juice, an ounce of orgeat as your sweetener. This is kind of... This is kind of like a modern, it's definitely a modern cocktail. I can't remember who exactly created it. That's going to knock it's, you on your ass. Angostura it, is 90% or what is it? 50. It's, yeah, yeah, it's almost like 50, right? 50 it's or seriously potent. Alcohol. It is a I'm massive, massive flavor bomb. Uh, I think I would just, I need an egg white in there. Uh, I Ooh. think that, that uh, right. there's a lot of robust right. flavors and then the egg white just adds a layer of creaminess that mm-hmm. will will be a good canvas for for the Angostura. So right. uh, that that I would I would try with that. I haven't had it, um, so I yeah, I could see an egg white being a very nice addition to it. All right, so I'm going to drop this in. I think this is a really good drink. I'm going to drop it into. If you guys don't care, I'm going to drop it up into top shelf sip because it really is. I think it's like a it's a dynamite drink in terms of like being a new creative way to use an ingredient. The flavor is intense. Like it's really, really good. So I'm going to drop it in a top shelf sip since neither of you guys had had it. Next up, we have the Bramble. Are you guys familiar with the Bramble? Another uh, another drink that you can get at a wedding that most people don't know about. Um, <laughs> but With fresh blackberries or with uh, like a blackberry liqueur? How do you normally like to do it, Akash? So I, I mean, whenever I've had it at a wedding, it's it's always been with blackberry liqueur, okay. Uh, uh, and then sometimes they'll have uh, a blackberry, fresh blackberry garnish, but that's that's the extent of it. Okay. Are you a um, fan? Do you like them? So for me, it's it's a it's a happy hour special or okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. All right, let's drop it in. Next up, we have the Cosmopolitan. How do you guys feel about a Cosmopolitan? Is it a sour or is it a daisy? because it's got uh, some liqueur in there as well. It's an okay drink. You can make one pretty good, um, but I don't think it's, no one's ever gonna think, well, okay. I'm not ever gonna be like, this is amazing. This is spectacular. Um, <laughs> I might say I would rather have a beer, but yeah, it's a, ha- I would drink one. I would happily drink one, a well-made one. So I'd say- Akash, how do you feel that, about it? That's a, that's I, a happy I, I, hour. Happy hour thing. Yeah, happy hour. For I think you, for me, okay. Co- uh, Cosmo for me is dump bucket. I, I'm not a fan of vodka. Um, I'm not a fan of vodka. That's all I'm gonna say. Yeah, but so. here's the thing: is it's not just vodka. You're using vodka, sure. to, vodka or lemon citrus vodka. It's, yeah, the so, citrus which vodka. Is, yeah, which is you made a lemon alcoholic, right? I mean, because that's all. What vodka is a tool when it comes to cocktails. Vodka is a tool. It's to turn thing. It's to dilute flavor without lowering proof or to um, make something alcoholic that previously was not. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, 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 for me personally, I enjoy the alcohol 
for the alcohol, uh, like the gins, the rums, the whiskeys, they all have a significant flavor profile. They bring a lot to the palate. And then vodka just is not, if I want the alcohol in there, I'm going to put in something that's going to contribute to the, the flavors of the cranberry and the lime or lemon. So John, correct me if I'm wrong, you landed on happy hour for the Cosmo, Akash, yeah, you said I wouldn't, dump bucket, I wouldn't. is that right? Yes, yes, dump bucket for me. All right, no in that case, splitting the difference, we're gonna drop it in, rather have a beer as a compromise, which I think feels appropriate. Next up, we have the Ayurvedic penicillin, a Psycho Chef original, uh, which I've not had. I've never, Akash, you need to make me one of these sometime, man. Uh, you're Absolutely. holding out on me. Why don't you for, obviously this is your creation. So why don't you run us through the specs here? Yeah, so uh, it, it starts with uh, blended, uh, blended whiskey, uh, blended scotch in particular. Uh, I'm, I'm a huge fan of Monkey Shoulder or, or even Black Label because you know all the, the brown people love their Black Label. Um, <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so two, uh, two ounces of that, uh, three fourths ounce of lemon juice, three fourths ounce of a honey, ginger and turmeric infused syrup, uh, and, uh, topped off with a little bit of Isla malt or Jura, uh, scotch just for that smokiness. Uh, you can throw in some rosemary, uh, you can throw in a, a candy ginger as a garnish. Um, but yeah, that's, that's, that's the base of it. Uh, it, it is a twist on the classic penicillin that uh, mm -hmm. was founded by um, at the Attaboy Bar mm -hmm. uh, in New York City. And, uh, it, you know, I, the only thing I really changed up in there was just turmeric, uh, turmeric, a little bit of black pepper. And uh, and uh, yeah, that, that was that was the only variation that I did on it. It sounds awesome. I'll let you decide where this one goes, but I would rank it pretty high just based on how much. I love the penicillin and how good uh, this recipe sounds. Uh, yeah, I think this one for me is always on standby. I always have a bottle of uh, honey, ginger syrup, and then either I throw in uh, fresh turmeric powder or, uh, and fresh ginger. Um, so yeah, for me, it's always going to be on standby. Sounds great. Next up, we have the Hemingway Daiquiri. As I hinted that we would get to earlier in the video, uh, how do you guys feel about the Hemingway daiquiri? Do we need to talk specs so that we're all on the same page here? Yeah, I, let's review yes, them. because yeah, because I uh, think I'm remembering it correctly, but okay. The what I'm seeing here is two ounces of white rum, half an ounce of maraschino, half uh, three quarters of an ounce, excuse me, of lime juice, and half an ounce of grapefruit juice. That's uh, how does that, how does everyone feel about that? I'm just gonna, I'll just put this out there. I don't love maraschino. Uh, so I'm inclined to put this on the lower end of the spectrum just because I don't think, I don't love the, the flavor that maraschino brings to the party. So for me, I would probably drop it to rather have a beer, but I wanna know what you guys think. Um, I, I love maras maraschino. As we're supposed to say, but yeah, for me the the grapefruit in that just I and I love grapefruit too, um, but yeah, it just doesn't doesn't work for me. Mm. So uh, Akash, how do you gonna... feel about it? So uh, for me, this one uh, and given these specs, I, I think it rate, rates a little bit higher for me. Um, probably on standby or happy hour special for me. Um, okay, I I love maraschino, um, not because not for any reason, I just love that it's, uh, I, I'm biased towards cherries. That's one of my favorite fruits, cherry and mango in the summer, any day in, uh, you will find in my fridge, right? Like, so um, I'm, I'm really biased towards maraschino liqueur. Okay. And so for me, for that reason, it, it rates much higher. Okay. Uh, so what do you guys think? Uh, happy hour, old standby, what's the verdict? I, I think I'd rather have a beer. It's a not, I mean, again, just me, my preference. It's that, that great for you and that just doesn't work for me. Okay. Uh, how about we split the difference and call it happy hour since, since uh, Akash, you were leaning higher. John, you were leaning lower. I was leaning yeah. lower too. So maybe we'll go happy hour. <laughs> um, That's fair. And split the difference here. Okay, next up, we've got the Caipirinha. Classic, uh, you know, South American, Brazilian cocktail, fresh lime. Uh, sugar, 
Uh, Kashasha, I think I'm saying that right. I hope I'm saying that right. Uh, how do you guys feel about a Kuiperina? Beautiful. Right. For me, that's, that's on standby. Job. I I'd, yeah. I'd, I'd, I'd drop it in standby too. John? Yeah. Standby. Standby it is. Do you guys, now let me ask you, do you, how often do you guys make them, if at all? And when you make them, do you muddle, do you like, do you muddle the limes in the glass or in the tin and then shake it? Or do you just build it in the glass? Like, how do you guys normally like to do it? Uh, I'll go. Uh, I, I muddle everything in the glass. Like it has to, for me, that's one of those drinks you, you want in a pint glass. Uh, you want at a least pint glass sounds a bit limes. big. <laughs> a full yeah, pint? But, but it is, it is, it is a tall drink. Um, and, and you load it up with ice. Pint. I would put that in a, like a low ball glass. Like, uh, I don't, I thought I had one around here. I guess I don't. Well, I'll put so it in a low ball. Here, yeah. So, so but this, is one of those, this is one of those drinks, right? If you actually load it up with ice, it's by the pool. You're sitting by the pool. You're sitting on the beach. You don't want to have to keep like making this drink. And it's, it stays cool long enough. The, the oils from the limes keep coming out. The juices keep coming out. Like let it let it sit while you will have a different experience from your first sip to your last sip, and for me that's why it's on standby. And like I, I'll have a larger uh, version of it, and I so I can sip for a much longer time. I don't have to get up. Next up, we've got the gin gimlet, uh, which I believe this was something. I believe you, you wanted to dive into the gimlet a little bit, Akash. Am I am I wrong? Yeah, I, I guess like where. <sighs> I mean, this, this just goes back to the argument, like, what is a daisy? What is a sour? What is a gimlet, right? And, and why, why is it something made with lime juice almost always considered a gimlet? Um, or is it the lime cordial in this, which is, which there's a whole history behind why there's a, a lime cordial, but. Um, yeah. yeah, I think, I think the difference it. is the cordial, right? Like it's the cordial versus the fresh lime juice, which you can do a gimlet it might not be, maybe it's, you're technically playing with the definition a little bit, but you can make a fresh juice gimlet um, and it's still quite delicious. Um, but I do like the cordial versions a good bit, as long as it's a homemade lime cordial and not, again, they, not roses. <laughs> right, not roses, but there are, there are good lime cordials you can get. And just to clarify for, you know, what you mean by cordial is it's not just lemon juice and sugar. It involves, um, you know, or not lemon, uh, lime juice and sugar. It involves, you know, the, the rind and the oils from that. So. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The the version that I make is Jeffrey Morgenthaler's recipe. You know, you take the zest from a couple limes, um, let it soak with the lime juice, citric acid, malic acid, blend it all up, strain it, and then you get this. the The lime cordial just has this like it punches you in the face with this like tart um, it's almost bordering. It's, it just, it hits you like so hard, like, and you can kind of feel it. Like you ever have something that's like super, super tart and you can kind of feel it like in the back of your, your throat a little bit and like, kind of like the sides, it's just, it's super good. I'm a, I'm a huge fan of, of that fresh lime cordial. I love uh, my, I was one of my uh, mother's favorite drinks though. Was the, the yeah. Drink. Yeah, so I don't know about you guys. I dropped this into old standby. How are you guys feeling about it? Yeah, precisely. Old standby. Okay, let's do it. Next up in our drink list, we've got the Pegu Club or Pegu Club. How do you guys feel about the Pegu Club? Uh, well, one, I will, I will, again, tangent, but like I love that you you used a different pronunciation because uh, that particular drink uh, was founded at a social club. Uh, a British social club uh, in Burma, and that's named after the Bago River, which is in present-day Myanmar. Uh, but uh, that's where the name came from, and then eventually became Pegu Club, which there was a, a, a famous historic New York bar named after it. Yes, so, uh, I've been there. Yeah. Yeah. So wait, did I yeah. say it right? Is it Pegu? Uh, well, I mean, the the or the I, and I, I I may be butchering the river's name, but it, it would. If you look at the spelling, it's B-A-G-O. That's what the river is named, which uh, in, in whatever language it was at the time, the, the Burmese language, uh, it was pronounced Bago from what I understand. And Bago became Pegu 
in because Which, that's what the British have done. Yeah, linguistic. Leave, leave it to the white people to, to butcher go. other people's names, right? So, well, right. No, I mean linguistically, <laughs> it makes sense for a B to become a P or a V, et cetera, et cetera. All right, so we're we've gotten fairly off track here. Akash, do you like the drink? <laughs> I love the drink. I I absolutely love the drink because I think again, this is this if you there's enough variations of it and it's traveled the world, right? So if you uh, make a slight modification, it's the kamikaze. If you make a slight modification from there, uh, you get the Cosmo. Um, uh, it, you know, it, it plays into that daisy category as well. It um, might technically you know, be a daisy, I, I think. It, exactly, right? And, and that's, that's where like the margarita is like a, a, a subset of that. So uh, I, I love this drink. Um, uh, and it's, it's amazing for me. It's, it's always going to be top shelf like that, you know, for you as like how you make army and Navy all the time. Every time we're chatting uh, for me, the Pigu club is a, is a go-to. John, how do you feel about the Pigu club? Uh, I'm going to say it's a top shelf cocktail. Okay. But for me, it's a standby. Hmm. Standby. Okay. All right. Well, let's drop it in top shelf. Cause Akash is a top shelf. Fan. How about fine. that? I'm good. Okay. I'm cool with that. Next up, we've got the sidecar, which again, we're in that, in that category. We're talking a little bit, uh, maybe it's a daisy. Uh, maybe it's not technically a pure sour, but what the hell, let's consider it for this ranking. How do you guys feel about the sidecar? I love a good sidecar. I think it's a great drink. Um, I never make it. Same. Uh, it's a good drink that I never make yeah, for some reason. Yeah. Um, but here's the thing that's funny is if you go to your average bar anymore, um, they have something that they call a, uh, a brandy margarita. What? <laughs> this is a trick. Is people ask for instead of tequila, can I have brandy? I'm not certain what they're doing, but a couple of times I've been like, you realize that's just a sidecar, right? Yeah. So it's a yeah. pint glass sidecar. All right. So where are you putting the uh, where are you putting the sidecar? Standby, happy hour. It doesn't sound. Is it top no, shelf? I mean, it doesn't sound like it's, you know. No, I mean I think it's a fantastic drink. I just never make it. So I don't know. What does that mean? If I think it's an excellent drink, but I never make it. I, I so I for me it's going to be in the happy hour special. But I, I agree with that. I think uh, brandy is such a underrated uh, spirit, uh, and most bars, even craft cocktail bars, have a very limited selections of of good brandy right and right. um it, so it, it can go either way and, and it can go horrible right so i think that that's why it's just uh, a very underrated drink and uh uh if i if i know what brandy they're using and uh, if i'm seeing it somewhere i'll, I'll go with the happy hour special on that. all right sidecar in the happy hour next up we have a cocktail that i know that we have made at thursday night cocktails we've got the jack rose uh, John, how do you feel about a Jack Rose? How do I feel about it? Um, I'm trying to think if I was just recently having a conversation about this drink. It's fine. <laughs> he takes two minutes to answer and comes back with it's fine <laughs> it's all right okay all right akash what what how do you feel about the jack rose <laughs> I, I will i'm just gonna i'm just gonna pour myself some uh apple brandy in honor of the jack rose because i love it so much i think for yes. me it, it sits somewhere between top shelf and uh uh on standby um, okay. It, it's it's just it's simple. It's amazing. This is again uh, apple brandy, uh, very underrated American spirit, um, and especially if you can get the hundred proof stuff, it's great canvas, great old fashions you can make from it. Um, so for me, uh, the Jack Rose um, is awesome, and I, I also have a variation of it where the grenadine I used is infused with uh, fresh rose petals, so uh, mm. brings a very floral and uh, just a, a very summary uh, experience to, to your drink. So uh, slight modification to the grenadine, but uh, change, up, change up the drink entirely for me. So top shelf for me. John, it should be top shelf for you because it originates in New Jersey. So uh, Yeah, no, I know. I know what you're saying. I know. I know. All right. Um, Jack Rose, for, for those that don't sale. know, John and I are both from New Jersey. 
Uh, okay, next up, we've got the Pisco Sour. Uh, ha- Akash, how do you feel about the Pisco Sour? Sa- oh, John has something he wants to say. No, go ahead. Go, you go first. I, I have, okay. I have, I no, have I'm gonna, I'm gonna respect my elders and, and let Coach go first. Okay, but the thing about a Pisco Sour is if it's, again, there's bad Pisco, there's good Pisco, you make it good, right? The good brandy, um, I say, I think it's a top shelf classic cocktail. Um, for me, standby, a good old standby. That's something I'm not going to make all the time, but it's something that, yeah, I love it. And I love yeah. it. You know, Akash tickles my fancy. I, I, I can agree with that. I think for me, that, that drink is uh, very intriguing because there's like what, what John was saying, there's a lot of arguments around uh, how it came about, what, and so the the one that the rest the story that I like to follow is that the the South American version the Chilean version uh, with the eggs is what actually carried over to the Americas over time and that's where the the modern whiskey sour using the egg white um, really came into play so mm-hmm. again uh, what I was saying earlier just cocktails are not an American thing this was something that uh, a lot of Chilean and and uh, South American uh, drinkers like they say like this is our drink we drink this all the time you you right call it a cocktail or we didn't call it a whatever it was but this is ours and then we brought it to you and then you made it yours into a whiskey sour or whatever Mm -hmm. uh, a boston sour whatever it's called so yeah so for me it's it's a good standby i don't make it enough i don't know the the nuances of, of pisco as much but uh but yeah good good standby drink okay all right i'm good with that Next up, we have the Bee's Knees, uh, which is gin, lemon, and honey syrup, I believe. Akash, how do you feel about the Bee's Knees? Uh, this, is, this is another one that I, I kind of modified and, and used, in my, um, used in my classes. Uh, so for me, it's, it's always going to be on standby, uh, and it's, it's a really good drink mm-hmm. great canvas and you can you can play around with it so what, okay uh, i infuse some saffron uh, and and saffron and uh uh even fennel i've, I've played with it so it, it works really well and it's, it's good john i love it. i'm a big fan of fennel. So are we talking um, top shelf or old standby how, how much do you love it john um <clears throat> Again, it's a top shelf cocktail. For me, it's a standby thing. And for me also, um, I like a variation of it with um, apple brandy. Okay. All right. Instead Um, of the gin. Okay. Let's drop it into old standby then. Is that where we landed? I think so. I think so, yeah. Okay. Uh, next up, we have the South Side, which is gin, lime, simple, and mint. John, how do you feel about a South Side? You like mint in your drinks? Only in a julep or as a okay. garnish for a uh, Mai Tai. Um, so for me, it's a it's a fine drink. It's just not my taste. I love gin. Gin's my you know tops with me, but yeah, not a, not a fan of the mint in that, but. So okay, me, Akash. It's, how about not you? A, it's definitely not a garbage. Yeah, it's so yeah. I, go ahead, go ahead, Akash. Yeah, the, the the California in me, um, the fresh mint that grows in my yard, like it just uh, elevates it. Um, and then I think I don't know if you mentioned bitters in your spec, but like two dashes of Anglo bitters, um, perfect here. So another yep. another standby. This was this was actually one of the first drinks I taught in my virtual classes. So mm-hmm. uh, I'm. Uh, I'm going to keep it in, in standby for sure. Yeah, I'll, I'll go with you on the old standby. One of my first videos was the South Side. I like him a good bit. I like mint in a drink. Um, so yeah, I'm good with that. It's one of your favorite drinks, right? Uh, it's, it's probably, it's up there. It is up there a lot. I don't always have mint on hand though. So I don't make it probably as often as, as I like it. You know, I really like it, but I don't make it a ton because I don't always have mint, you know? I'm not blessed it's, with Akash's fresh, uh, fresh herbs and citrus. <laughs> I will send you some herbs next. Do not, yes. do not fret. Um, so, all right. So next up we have the Brown Derby, which is bourbon, grapefruit juice, honey syrup. Uh, how do you guys feel about the Brown Derby? 
Uh, just on the specs, I'm gonna I'm gonna rate it lower. Either ha- rather have a beer or even dump truck. Like too many too many strong flavors that are gonna conflict. Honey, uh, grapefruit, just very strong. I, I don't I don't see that working for me. But that's okay. that's me. John, I I've, I've never had it. Okay, um, let's do but- dump bucket then. <laughs> All right. Let's keep rolling. We've got the uh, Akash. This is another Psycho Chef original, the Golgapa Rita. Uh, why don't you tell us about that? Oh, man. Yeah, so this is this is actually a, a twist on, on a spicy jalapeno margarita, whatever you will. Uh, but I really wanted to bring in some uh, classic Indian street food flavors, um, uh, particularly known as chaat. But uh, yeah, it's, it, it infuses a, a, a specific blend of spices called chaat masala. Uh, fresh herbs, cilantro, mint, uh, some fresh ginger, and uh, and and then the rest is you know it, it varies. I, I I do it with gin. Um, I've done it with tequila, some triple sec or curacao, and uh, and and some simple syrup. Just uh, that that's all that it is. And and of course uh, some green chilies or, or jalapeno uh, to to bring in some heat. But uh, it's tangy, it's spicy, it's sweet, um, all at once, and uh, mm-hmm. it's it's uh, it take, takes me back to uh, to the streets of India where where I'm just eating uh, eating street food. So, all right, John, everything you've heard, where are you putting this? Top shelf with the gin. Top shelf, baby. <laughs> Top shelf. <laughs> you don't have to be biased towards me. You can tell me. Um, I love a margarita. I, I Since that. I haven't I had this, I'm just solely basing it on the fact that I love margaritas. So we're putting it top shelf. <laughs> okay, next up, we've got the New York Sour, which is a whiskey sour with a red wine float on top, as you can probably tell from the photo. John, how do you feel about the New York Sour? Um, I mean, I like a whiskey sour. Um, I suppose the red wine... You wouldn't do a red wine float if it didn't work for some reason. So, right. <laughs> but again, I'm not going home and making it. So I don't know. Yeah. Uh, it's Akash. It's, any, uh, any thoughts? Uh, I'll, I'll let John finish his thoughts. Yeah. Sorry. I cut you off. I know it's, I mean, no, it's another one of those things where it's like, I don't know. It's probably a top shelf cocktail, but I, I don't make it. Not, ever, absolutely. For me, it's dump bucket. It's dump bucket. It's dump. It's dump bucket. What is it? Uh, is it like? Because because uh whoever whoever created this really just was end of the night and they're like i need to throw either <laughs> throw out these ingredients or put it into a drink uh this the sour mix is not fresh sour mix it's not fresh lemon juice again no but doesn't this date back fairly far the new york it's sour. a classic it is an old it's, it's, it's a, been it around is, for a while it is a yeah. classic uh it is a classic but over time it just became so horrible and then the red wine that it, it, again, you have to use uh, quality red wine um, that will pair with citrus. You can't use like a Malbec or something heavy that's that's going to overpower and then conflict with the whiskey that you use. So, so right. what you're saying is, if it were made well, yeah. But I mean, that's that's any drink, and you know, like it, for what I can get right now, unless I'm the making chain. it, unless I'm making it, there's there's no way that it's it's going to be that well made. Uh, it, it, okay. I'm sorry, it's a yeah. hot statement. Call me pretentious again, but that it's well, you not... are. But <laughs> no, no, I, I take your point because what are the chances of getting the red wine that's going to work with that? It doesn't. It, it doesn't have right? to. You, you need you need like a Zinfandel. You need something a little bit lighter. Right. Uh, you need you need a uh, either just a, a red wine uh, blend works too. But just I don't know. Like it, it's not it's not mm-hmm. something that I'm gonna go looking for or make um, I agree I'm in the same boat it's it's not a bad drink but it's it's I, I think it gets a lot more hype than it deserves because people like the la- the look of the layered effects so you, you see it a lot on Instagram you see a lot on YouTube mm. because it looks cool uh, but the drink itself is kind of underwhelming uh, moving on I, we're I talking so. about the pink lady how do you guys feel about the pink lady wait pink lady is Gin, what? grenadine, lemon juice, I believe. And I'm confirming that. Oh, no, no, excuse no, me. Egg white? Wait, wait, egg white? hold on. Yeah, it's this gin, one? lemon juice. Oh, no, 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 I take it back. I'm wrong, I'm wrong. It's gin, applejack, lemon juice, and grenadine with an egg white. Gin, applejack, 
lemon juice grenadine. Yeah. For me, uh, I'm I'm gonna go with because I I love the Jack Rose particularly. It's gonna sit somewhere between Happy Hour Special and rather have a beer. Okay. John, you have uh, any any problem with putting it in Happy Hour Special? Nah, I love. I mean, I like. I'm a big fan of a Clover Club. Okay. Uh, but yeah, it makes sense. All right, our final drink. Getting back to the basics, talking a straight up whiskey sour with an egg white, with some drops of Angostura on the foam, kind of giving the nice aromas. How does everyone feel about a whiskey sour? Something that potentially the South Americans developed. Uh, I, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Uh, I, you know what? Um, I, I love making this. This was the this was a drink that uh, was the bonus drink, and and you know we we whenever it was it was not on the the uh, agenda at all. And if we had extra time, we would we would make this. And people were like, "Oh, you could put egg white in it." Um, so for that, because it was a fun thing, I'm just going to keep it in a happy hour special for me. John, I would go higher. I would go, I mean, for me, a whiskey sour is, I mean, it's, it's basic. Like there's nothing that's like going to blow your mind here, but I think it's about as good as it gets in terms of like basic cocktails, you know, like it's delicious. It's, it's okay. I, I, I'm not, you know, sour, I'm not the biggest fan of sours, generally speaking, but yeah, what? Yeah, whiskey's <laughs> the world is I just now here. To I told you. I told you early on. I'm like, eh. Um, but whiskey sour is okay. I'm not so where so what, so where are you feeling it? Like happy hour or I mean or lower? Um, I mean, like yeah. If if the three of us walk into a bar and Akash is like, let's get whiskey sour. I'm like, yeah, sure, hell yeah, I'll enjoy it. It's okay. All right. Well, Joel, so happy, happy hour say, is then I guess. Happy hour. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, look, it's it's a it's a good introductory drink for for those folks that do not particularly enjoy whiskey or do not they're just easily shied away and that or new that to cocktails in general. Yeah. Yeah, that was one of the things I learned from from doing the the classes was just people are like, oh, whiskey or rye or bourbon or scotch. Like it just like no, I don't drink this. You know, this is not my. I've, I'm a vodka soda person. Great, right. but God, let's, that's such let's a boring this, fucking right? drink. <laughs> sure, yeah. uh, you know, and and it's just it's just like you give them this, you give them a whiskey sour, you give them any sour with any spirit. I think it it creates a wonderful wonderful introductory yeah. to that spirit, right? Yeah, uh, it's a gateway drink something for, that, for people. It's to get exactly for me that that's particularly why I love sours, and uh, and um, I was happy that even something like the whiskey sour introduced a lot of people to whiskey and I was mm -hmm. able to tell the story of, of bourbon, rye, scotch, yep. uh, Japanese whiskey, you know, to, to the world. So uh, um, for me, that, that that's why it's a fun drink. Cool. All right, guys, that is the end of our list. Looking at everything you see on screen right now, how does everyone feel about it? You good with it where everything landed? No, the Cosmo belongs in a dump bucket. I don't know why you guys put it up so high. <laughs> like, if there was a it's, category... still in the, it's still in the D level tier. <laughs> yeah, it needs to be like under that. Like, it doesn't even need to be on. I don't even know why you put it on this thing. Like, it's I, like, I, it's I, like, yeah, I don't think it really belongs on the list anyway. But it, it, it's, it's, yeah, it's not. Look, I'm never going to deliberately make one. <laughs> right. But I'm John, do you have any, now. John, do you have any gripes? Similar to Akash with the Cosmo, like any gripes uh, from what you're seeing? Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I don't yeah. disagree with the, his <laughs> his thinking about it, but again, if you gave it to me, I'm like, yeah, I'm going to drink it. It's all right. <laughs> all right, guys. Well, thank you so much for joining me for this episode. I had a lot of fun doing it. It was great to kind of like pick your brains a little bit after we've, you know, we haven't had a, a TNC or an R&D night for a long time. So this was a lot of fun for me. Uh, I hope you guys had fun too. I, I had a blast. I will say for those that actually made it through to the end of this video, reach out to me uh, at Psycho <laughs> Chef on Instagram. I will give you a free one hour virtual mixology class uh, because I know that this video went crazy long. So thank you for staying along. <laughs> well, we're going to be doing it, it. We're going to edit it down a little bit. <laughs> Still. But yes, I will keep that in. <laughs> this part will get kind of let, let, <laughs> let me, I, and I, I have to say, um, well, one, this, this is awesome. It's a lot of fun, but also, um, geez, from, uh, from the, 
protege and sorry to say it again. Uh, what is it? Whipped cream vodka guy. Jeez, you know, <laughs> you are the masters now. We we are all collectively the masters. You we we you started us on our journey, coach. And I don't think any of us would be here if not for the TNCs at your place. So this was awesome. I had a really good time. All right. So that is our ranking, but we want to hear from you. I'm gonna drop a link to this tier template in the comments. Feel free to make your own. Uh, post them on Instagram, tweet them at us, whatever you want to do. Uh, but we want to hear from you about what we about our thoughts on these drinks and kind of where we got it wrong. So uh yeah, thank you so much for watching and we will see you guys on the next episode. Cheers.